Peace is a very rich biblical concept. Uh, in the Old Testament, the word shalom is, is used over and over again. Uh, God is called a God of peace, and his peace is one of the greatest blessings the people of Israel could experience. Now, peace is not the absence of conflict. And in many churches, what I run into is people thinking they're doing peacemaking when really they're doing peace faking. They're pretending like there's peace, but it's basically because the, the leaders of the church have just trained everybody to agree all the time, to, to never raise a question, to never voice a concern, just to always just go with whatever the pastor says. And so there's this appearance of peace. It's not real. It's, it's uh, peace faking. Um, real shalom is not the absence of conflict. It's the presence of a unity of spirit and purpose, a unity of love for God, a unity of love for Jesus Christ, uh, a unified desire to see the kingdom grow and thrive, but it's also a, um, an attitude that not only allows but celebrates diversity. And so you could have a church that is passionate about Christ, passionate about the kingdom, and yet you have some people that are involved in youth ministry, some people want to do evangelism, some people want to be in a prayer ministry, um, and not everybody has to be passionate about the same thing. So there can be lots of different ways people are living out their faith. There can be lots of different ways that people are expressing their love for God. But if there are differences, they talk with each other, they work those things through, uh, even places where there's tension. For example, uh, churches have this thing called a budget, and they can only put so much money into missions and so much money into the youth ministry. And so there's a potential conflict. There's a potential for tension there. And how they talk through those things, how they listen to what the other group is doing, how they celebrate their successes, how they talk about this. And so, okay, and how do we take the limited resources we have and actually use them in the most effective way? And to me, the, the greatest examples I've seen of peace, um, I've gone into cases where there was tensions in a church, people competing for their various priorities. And as the Holy Spirit began to move in their hearts, as it began to really feel love for the other person, um, I can still remember many moments where the parties become advocates for the other person's priorities. They say, you know, we really should put more money into the youth ministry. And the youth people say, no, actually, missions should really be a more thing. I mean, that's, that's a celebration of a, of, a, of a conflict of each person trying to outdo the other person in serving God. So peace is a very broad concept, but those are just some of the uh, implications.